In less than 24 hours, Ethereum is gonna go through the biggest positive catalyst in the history of cryptocurrency. And so if you're holding Ethereum, thinking about buying Ethereum, or just curious about what this event means, then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna break all those things down as well as what some of the risks are for people as this happens. Okay, first of all, what is the merge? In the most simplest explanation possible, it's when the Ethereum blockchain is gonna transition from proof of work to proof of stake. And what that means is that transactions are no longer gonna be verified by miners. And those transactions are now gonna be verified by validators that use their Ethereum as collateral to prove that they're not submitting false or fraudulent transactions to the Ethereum network. And according to the experts that are tracking how fast Ethereum is progressing to the point where it's gonna transition over from proof of work to proof of stake, it's gonna happen within the next 24 hours, probably sometime in the early hours hours of the morning of September 15th. This website is predicting it's gonna happen around 1 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, so now that that stuff is out of the way, we can now talk about the more interesting aspects of this, at least in my opinion, which is what are the impacts of the merge gonna be on people that hold Ethereum, Ethereum investors, but also some of the potential risks. Now, let's start with the positive side, and then I'll talk about the risks afterward. The reason why I said this is gonna be one of the largest positive catalysts in the history of cryptocurrency is because there's a few factors with the merge that are going to impact the supply and demand for Ethereum, which is definitely gonna have a major, major impact on the price. So let's talk about that. For starters, as soon as the merge goes through, the new issuance of Ethereum, the increase in supply of Ethereum, is going to be axed completely. It's currently sitting at around 5.5 million new ETH per year is essentially minted and paid out to miners as a reward for verifying transactions. Now, as we transition to proof of stake, those rewards are going to decrease to approximately 0.6 million or 600,000 ETH per year. That's gonna be paid out to validators in the proof of stake system. So we're moving from five and a half million new supply per year to 0.6 million new supply per year. Now, in addition to the reduction in new supply of Ethereum, the burn of current Ethereum, which is when people submit transactions to the blockchain, they pay certain fees to miners currently and in the future to validators, but also a portion of the fees that they paid are burned. They're basically just removed from the ecosystem in order to keep some sort of equilibrium. And so that number is projected to stay approximately the same. So supply, new supply is decreased increasing the burn is going to stay the same. And as a result of that, the supply growth for Ethereum in general is projected to flatline after the merge. And if we go down here, you can see how since inception from the Genesis block of Ethereum, the supply has been steadily increasing. But once the proof of work goes away and we come in with proof of stake, that is actually projected to peak and eventually actually taper off to a point where it becomes slightly deflationary over time. All right, now stay with me here because there's a couple more elements to this that greatly impact the price. Now, in addition to the fact that supply growth is going to essentially fall off a cliff, once we move to proof of stake for a period of six to maybe 12 months, people that stake their Ethereum, and this is not mandatory by the way, but people that do choose to stake their Ethereum are not going to be able to withdraw that staked Ethereum until another hard fork of the blockchain occurs in, like I said, six to 12 months. But until that upgrade happens, people that stake their Ethereum won't be able to withdraw. And also all of the rewards paid out to stakers, so that new issuance that I was mentioning of about 600,000 new ETH per year that's paid out as a reward will not be withdrawable. And so what that means is for a period after the ETH merge, there's gonna be absolutely zero no new Ethereum coming on the market. In addition to all that, even once the upgrade happens and people are able to withdraw their staked Ethereum as well as their rewards, there's gonna be a lot less sell pressure because currently there's 6.6 .6 million new ETH that is paid out to miners and that those miners usually have to sell in order to upkeep their mining rigs and to pay for their operations. Well, under the new system proof of stake, that new issuance obviously is reduced and so miners don't have to sell as much uh, Ethereum onto the market in order to cover the cost of their operations. Also because the cost to stake is significantly less than the cost to mine. And so in general, this just means that there's gonna be a major, major reduction in supply, as well as a reduction in the selling pressure because there's gonna be fewer people that have to sell their Ethereum that's paid out as rewards in order to cover their costs of operations. And even if demand just stays exactly the same, or if it even increases, if there's growth in the network, 
new dApps being built upon Ethereum and new people coming into the ecosystem and starting to interact with it, well, we all know that if supply goes down and demand increases or even just stays the same, then price has to go up. Now, one more major positive thing about the merge before I move to the risks and talk about some of those is that the energy use of Ethereum is going to again fall off a cliff once the merge goes through and it's projected to decrease by over 95%. So 95% less energy will be used by the blockchain to validate transactions under a proof of stake system as opposed to a proof of work system. And so there's been a lot of negative publicity and people talking about how the Ethereum blockchain or just blockchains and cryptocurrency in general uses way too much energy, that it's not energy efficient, that it uses as much energy as entire nation states and countries do. Well, once this transition happens, that will no longer be the case and people that want to bash Ethereum or use this as a bear case argument for why Ethereum is not sustainable won't be able to use that anymore and so that's just one fewer things that is potentially preventing major mainstream adoption, potentially preventing large pension funds or ETFs from being created or from investing in Ethereum. And so by removing that obstacle, that is again, a major positive thing for Ethereum. Now, of course, all of this is not without risks. So let me talk about some of those. First of all, let's talk about technical risk because this is a very complex undertaking that's about to happen. And even though the developers of Ethereum have gone through several test nets and shadow forks, uh, shadow merges, essentially they've tested this out several, several times, doesn't necessarily mean that on the day of everything is going to go absolutely perfectly. And there is certainly a chance, even if it's a small chance, that something goes wrong. Now, Ethereum core developers and people that are close to the community put this risk at a very, very low percentage, something like 1% chance that something goes absolutely wrong. But of course, as with any complex thing in life, there's variables that can't all be predicted. And so if something negative did happen as the transition from proof of work to proof of stake was underway, that could have a serious negative impact on the price. So even if it is a very low chance of something like that happening, it's definitely something that you have to be aware of, especially if you're holding Ethereum going into the merge or thinking about buying Ethereum over the next 24 hours. Now, in addition to the technical risk of the merge actually going through, there's also definitely some scammers that are trying to take advantage of this situation. So for example, MetaMask support is talking about how they've noticed an increase in people putting out messages and suggesting that you have to click some buttons and actually physically transition your Ethereum to proof of stake Ethereum. Now, if you see anything like this, it's absolutely totally a scam. There is nothing that holders of Ethereum have to do. It happens automatically and your Ethereum is good on the proof of stake network as soon as the transition happens. You don't have to actually do anything yourself. Another important thing to mention here is that while Ethereum transitions to proof of stake and the vast majority of the Ethereum community is moving along with it, there is a small handful of people, miners and influencers that don't want to support the Ethereum merge. And so they are planning on forking Ethereum. So what that means is once the transition to proof of stake happens, these miners and people that are supportive of staying with proof of work Ethereum are going to copy and paste the code and create another version of Ethereum called Ethereum W or Ethereum proof of work. And they're gonna keep running that blockchain in parallel with the new Ethereum. The Ethereum proof of work chain that's gonna be forked is technically probably still gonna have some residual value. People are projecting that it could be worth anywhere between $10 and 50 US dollars per ETH W. So that means that once that fork happens, all of the people that have wallets with Ethereum in it are automatically going to be credited with the same amount of ETH W, ETH proof of work. Now there are some people that are suggesting there's potentially risks associated with interacting with the ETHW proof of work chain. So if that's something that you're planning on doing, if you're planning on selling your ETHW that you get once the fork happens, I recommend checking out a couple of these threads and there's a few ways that you can actually sell it safely without having to worry about these risks. So I'll leave that at that. I don't wanna to get too much into the details here, but it's definitely something to be aware of. Okay, now to wrap all this up, I just wanna reiterate that this is a major, major positive catalyst for Ethereum, but nobody is able to predict what's gonna to happen to the price in the short to medium term. Although over the long term, it does seem like there's going to be major upwards pressure on the price and experts are suggesting that there's going to need to be tens of millions of dollars of new inflows into Ethereum once the merge goes through just to keep the price stable because of that decrease in supply. 
uh, which means that the price is going to go up if it doesn't have that much new capital flowing in every single day. But there is no way to predict exactly what's gonna happen in the short term, especially if people that are trading Ethereum around the merge are shorting it or longing it, especially using leverage. We don't know what's gonna happen to the price in the short to medium term. But over the long term, this is a major, major positive catalyst. And so if people watching this are holding Ethereum or thinking about buying into Ethereum for the long term, that's what I can say. I am currently holding a pretty significant amount of Ethereum in terms of my overall crypto portfolio. I will not be selling it. I'm planning on holding it for the long, long term. And I'm super excited to see what happens with the merge and also the future of Ethereum moving forward because I think there's lots of new possibilities now that we're moving to proof of stake. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.